Hello, let's learn how to create browse categories in Aspen Discovery. There are two ways to create browse categories and we will cover both in this video. First, you'll wanna make sure that your account has the correct permissions to administer browse categories. At least one of the user roles assigned to your account will need the administer all browse categories or the administer library browse categories permission. The administer all browse categories permission allows you to manage browse categories for all libraries in your system or consortium. Administer library browse categories allows you to manage browse categories for your library only. So important distinction, um, particularly for multiple libraries sharing an instance of Aspen. Um, you don't necessarily want to see everyone else's browse categories. You just want to see and manage them for your own site. First, let's tackle how to create browse categories from lists. In Aspen Discovery, all users can create lists, but staff members with the administrative permissions to administer browse categories will also be able to feature lists as browse categories. To learn about administrative permissions or creating lists, visit the Aspen Discovery Help Center for more info. Start by navigating to the list you want to turn into a browse category. The list privacy will need to be set to public in order to use it as a browse category. If you want to use a list created by another user, their list will need to be set to public and searchable, and your account will need the edit all lists permission. To edit list privacy, click the list title and then click the edit button and set the privacy to public. This is also where you can upload a custom cover image for your list, which will show up if you're adding this list as a subcategory. To add this list as a browse category, click the add to browse button. Enter a name for your browse category, then click create category. You'll now be able to see your list as a browse category when you return to the main page of your catalog. Keep in mind that browse categories created from lists are static meaning that the browse category will only display the contents of that list. To update the browse category, you'll need to add or remove titles from the list. You can also create browse categories from search results. Whereas lists are static, using search results creates dynamic browse categories that automatically update as items are added or removed from the search results. I like to start by performing a blank search which retrieves all possible results from the collection, and then narrow down using filters. However, you can also perform a keyword search, a subject search, or any other kind of search to build the results that you want. So let's say I want a browse category featuring new kids' books. First, I'm going to apply the juvenile audience filter Once that updates, I'm going to click the books icon to narrow out any e-content. Uh, next, I'm going to sort by the date purchase descending. This will put the newly added items to the catalog up at the top. And last, I'm going to sort by added in the last six months. As items become older than six months, they'll fall out of the browse category automatically. When you have your search results the way you want them, use the search tools either at the bottom of your search results or at the top as it's shown here. And then you'll just click on add to browse. Since this is a new browse category, I'm going to hit create new, give it a name, and click create category. 
Just like before, if I return to my main page of Aspen, I'll be able to see the browse category I just created. If you want to add subcategories to your browse categories, you can start with a completely new search or you can click into an existing browse category using the link that shows above the cover images. If my browse category has a lot of filters on it and it's set up mostly how I want it to be, but I only need to change one or two filters, clicking that link gives us a good starting point because here you can see all the filters I have applied. Let's say I want to add a new kids fiction and a new kids nonfiction subcategory. So I can start by applying the fiction filter. And let's say everything else is exactly how I want it. The newest items at the top, filtering out anything older than six months just showing everything that was added in the last six. Click my search tools, click add to browse, create new. I'm going to give this a name, new kids fiction. And I'm going to add it as a subcategory to new kids books. Then click create category. I'll return to my main page, click on new kids books, and there is my first subcategory. Now we did create new kids books. That browse category still exists, but once you start adding subcategories, this browse category becomes kind of the container for your subcategories. So just keep that in mind. Now, if I want to add a second subcategory, New Kids Nonfiction, I can easily click into this link above the cover images, remove that fiction filter, and now I can apply nonfiction instead. If the results look how I want them to, I can click on Search Tools, Add to Browse, Create New, I'll call this new kids nonfiction. And again, add as a subcategory to and select that new kids books browse category. Then click create category. I'll return to the main page, click new kids books. And now I see both my new kids fiction and new kids nonfiction subcategories. So we've added a browse category and subcategories, but what if we want to rearrange them or we're not ready to add them to our main page just yet? Let's head over to Aspen Administration, then scroll down to Local Catalog Enrichment. So you'll see two browse category related sections here. Browse category groups is where you can manage the browse categories on your main page. Browse categories is where all the browse categories you create will live, whether they're displaying on your main page right now or not. So let's click into browse category groups, then click into your library's setting. In these settings, you have a couple options for the default cover viewing mode, show as covers only or show as a grid. You also have options for displaying the rating stars or not display them, although I highly recommend displaying your rating stars for users. In this browse categories section, you'll see all the browse categories that are currently displaying on your main page. You can click and drag them to rearrange them. You can click add new if you want to select another browse category to add to your site. And the selection here will show any browse categories you've created for your library 
And if you're in a system or a consortium, you'll also see browse categories that have been shared with everyone. You'll also be able to select a few of the system generated browse categories. These are recommended for you, your lists, and your save searches. These browse categories will only show up to users who are logged in and have rated titles to see the recommendations, created any lists, or saved any searches. Um, so again, these are not showing to everyone, just to users who logged in and just their own content. These add a really fun personal touch to your site so users can see their own content while they're logged in. And then likewise, if I want to delete a browse category from here, so let me save really quick. Maybe I changed my mind about frog and toad. I can click the delete button here. And that just removes it from the main page. It does not delete that browse category permanently. We'll talk about that in a second. I know that the new kids books browse category has subcategories. So if I wanted to see and maybe rearrange or edit those, I can click the edit button here. And that's going to take me into editing this specific browse category. If I scroll down, I will be able to see these subcategories so I can rearrange the order they show up in or if I no longer want one of them to appear, I can click delete. If I need to add additional subcategories, I can click add new and then save. To get back to the browse category group settings, I can use the side menu here, click on browse category groups, and I'm back to where I was. You also have options here at the bottom to select your library and locations to which these group settings should apply. So if you're in a library system or consortium where each library has their own catalog, you would likely want individual settings for each catalog so everyone can configure their own browse categories. Next, let's take a look at all the browse categories. To see all your browse categories, click on Browse Categories under Local Catalog Enrichment. In this section, you can see all browse categories visible to you based on your permissions and some other useful information. First, in this first column, you have the browse category name. You can also see who the browse category is shared with, which will either be everyone or a specific library if you just want that library to have access to that browse category. The library column here tells you the library associated with the user who created the browse category. You also can see a start and end date if the browse category has been scheduled, whether there are any subcategories, the browse category source, whether it's from a grouped work search or from a list. And if you scroll all the way to the right, you'll be able to see the times the browse category has been shown, how many times titles have been clicked from that browse category, and how many times users have dismissed the browse category. From this screen, you can also edit any browse category or subcategory. So you would just click the edit button on the side here, or wherever you see the ID number with the little editing pencil, you can also just click in to edit from there. At the top, you can edit the browse category name if you need. Next, you'll see the text ID. You may have noticed this text ID in a few different places. By default, Aspen automatically creates this text ID for browse categories, and it will add your library's subdomain to the beginning of it. Uh, which I don't have one here because I'm using the administration account and it doesn't have a library associated with it. Um, but yours would probably look something like, um, you know, your library's acronym or um, you know, the library's full name, whatever it lives in your library system settings um, in the subdomain. That is what Aspen will tack onto the front. 
and then it will be followed by the name of the browse category. So new kids books, new kids books. You can edit this text ID as long as you keep the same naming convention and as long as no other browse categories have that ID. Um, so for example, if I change this browse category name from new kids books to um, awesome kids books and save, you'll notice that the text ID doesn't change. So if I want to keep things consistent, I can just adjust that in the text ID and save. But that is a completely optional step. I just wanted to explain what that is and what it's for. Next, you'll see some other options like share with by default, um, based on the permissions on this account, it's sharing with everyone. If I want to share this with just a certain library, I can click to select selected library and then make sure that I have that library selected. Since this library just has one location for everybody, I can just share it with everybody. Next, you'll see a description text box. This is not visible to users. It's just for internal use. So again, completely optional. Next, you'll have options for scheduling your browse category. This is really useful if you have a browse category that's seasonal or applies to an event that's coming up or something that's just going to um, come and go like summer reading program. You can select a start date or an end date. And if I select a start date, this means that the browse category won't appear until this date arrives. If I select an end date, that means that the browse category will appear until this date. And once this date comes, it will fall off your main page. So it won't completely delete this browse category. It just won't be visible anymore on your main page. If you select no dates at all, then your browse category will just show indefinitely until you specifically remove or delete it. Next, here's that subcategory section again, um, if that does apply to this browse category. So I can again rearrange these from here or delete any that are no longer necessary. And after you've made any changes, you'll want to make sure to save. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about browse categories or anything else, please visit the Aspen Help Center at help.aspendiscovery.org. Thank you.